Hello people, welcome to Weekly Gems, where we talk about things that happen during the week. So what's happened recently now, that's been going on that probably everyone's aware of, is the topic of Omarion. So what's happening with Omarion is Omarion's baby mum, which name is April Jones, currently is going out with his old school bandmate, or bandmate, which his name is uh, Lil Fizz. And what's going on is, because they're going out, obviously it's brought out like an outrage where everyone's saying that oh, Lil Fizz is a snake, Lil Fizz, um, he's backstabbing on Marion because they used to be friends, they used to be in the same boy band together, they grew up together, and now he's going out with his baby mom, and all these little different backlashes is happening to him. So it's been like a big topic around the world right now, and everyone's really basically talking about it. And recently, Omarion done an interview, and in the interview, that was basically like the first time he's addressed the situation. So let's just watch a little bit of the interview, and then we're gonna talk about what the situation is. You know, you fast forward to 2019, and now you have Lil Fizz in April are, are a thing on social media. Right. And, and the optics are just crazy from, from the outside looking in. If I were to compare it to anything, it would be like, you know, you, you look at your phone and you have, you know, takeoff cuddling with Cardi B. <laughs> <laughs> okay. you, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay. <laughs> that's how it looks. Like, imagine how crazy that would look. Right. <laughs> like, you know, right. it's my girl Cardi B, you know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> like, like, like right. that's what I thought when I saw that. Uh, when that whole situation became public, uh, how did you feel about it? Um, I, I don't feel no ways. I, I, don't feel, I don't feel any way about it. I think that, um, you know, if if they're happy, you know, um, then they should be happy. When the video came out of him, you know, like the somewhat explicit video of both of them came out, did you just sort of shake your head like... <laughs> I don't know. I haven't seen it. You haven't seen it? No, I haven't seen it. Do you know the video I'm referring to? No. <laughs> uh, the video of him like playing with her butt? Like, oh, okay. I guess... I guess that's what, what couples do. <laughs> yep. Well, Fizz said that the two of you just have a working relationship. Is that is that a fair assessment? Um. Um. I, I guess so. Yes. Yes, we do. Yes. Yes, we okay. do. Okay. Welcome back. So, I assume you've seen the little clip that I put in the video, and as you can see, Omarion is acting happy, but. You can, tell, you can tell in his face that he's a little bit hurt. I understand. He's a little bit hurt because obviously, yeah, his baby mom going out with his bandmate. It's a little bit embarrassing. And obviously everyone's talking about him. People are probably just asking him questions and he's just tired about it. But I'm going to be honest. People don't really like it when I say this, yeah? But I'm going to be 100% honest. I don't think Lil Fizz has done anything wrong in my eyes. If anything, if anybody has done any wrong, it's the baby mom. But really and truly, they haven't done anything wrong because really and truly, Lil Fizz... It's not even Omarion's boy like that. Yeah, okay, cool. They've had interviews where he's saying, oh, yeah, we're friends, we're this. But one minute they're friends, one minute they're saying they're business partners. And also me, I watch Love and Hip Hop and I've seen certain things that Fizz says. And he says that he's trying to get through to Omarion. Omarion won't pick his calls. Omarion won't want to talk to him. So basically, they haven't really been friends since the group broke up back in 2004. So you've got to think about it like this now. The situation is not even like where Lil Fizz knows that um, Omarion is going out with his baby mom or whatever, they've been together and he's been preying on her and he took her away from him and then they broke up. It's not even a situation like that. The situation at hand is that Lil Fizz he's obviously somehow met April obviously along the lines. Obviously it's B2K so obviously they will know each other. She will know about him he will probably know about her because obviously they're in the limelight in the news. So he probably met her before, spoke a few times and you have to understand as well April and Omarion have been broken up for about three years. And April didn't leave Omarion. Omarion left for whatever, whatever reason why he left. Obviously, he hasn't really disclosed that. Or even if he has been disclosed, I don't really know why. But he has left. I mean, sorry. He, he left April. And apparently, April was going through all this bad, um, whatever, this bad time. Obviously, the situation was a thing where probably where he wasn't supporting her with 
like money and stuff so Lil Fizz was the person that stepped up and kind of helped her out in her dark times and stuff like that so obviously through that they developed a friendship and through that friendship over the course of time helping each other and um, her feeling the support of him obviously yeah cool it then developed into like a kind of like a relationship type of thing where they started to feel each other but obviously things like that happen and really and truly Lil Fizz you haven't done anything wrong what have you done wrong this this is not your friend this is just your business partner it's like, for example, somebody that you went to school with from, like, let's say, year 7 to year 11. Maybe, yeah, you used to chill all the time, whatever. But then when you went to college, you don't really chill like that anymore. Then you went to uni, you don't really talk like that. And then now you finish uni, around work, you meet his ex, maybe from the time when you were in school, or not even maybe the time you were in school, you know about his ex maybe around, and you meet her, and you lot get a connection, and you're together. How, how, what have you done wrong? Like, you know what I'm saying? It's not your boy. You know what I'm saying? More time, if he's your boy like that anyway, me personally, I let all my boys know. Everyone that knows me, they know there's this one girl that I'll tell them, listen, bro, this girl is a no-go, innit? You know what I'm saying? Like, if you go to this girl, it will bother me. Like, go to any other girl in this world, but this one, it will actually kind of bother me. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, I let all my friends know. So my friends, my real friends, they know. You know what I'm saying? That like, this girl, nah, if I go to this one, or, you know what I'm saying bother me the same way some of my friends they've told me and I know then again you should know when there's a girl that your boy likes to a certain extent where you know that even if they're not together whatever even if it's been 20 years if you go there it will bother him you should know this type of stuff you know what I'm saying that like, so Lil Fizz he hasn't really done anything wrong because that's not his boy you know what I'm saying it's just his business partner they make money together you know what I'm saying and he's met his wife and also Marion should be glad that is someone like Lil Fizz that's with his baby mama, not 50 Cent. Because just imagine you're someone like 50 Cent. It would be so peak. Like imagine 50 Cent. <laughs> Your baby mom or Marin. It would be peak. Be happy as Fizz. At least Fizz is someone that you know. And you know Fizz is a cool guy. That like he treats your baby mom nice. That makes your kids happy and all of that, man. And I'm saying, just imagine you're some next guy, like some next gangster that's just going to treat you bad. That's just going to affect your kids. Like you said yourself in an interview, if she feels bad, or if she's hurt, it affects your kids. So it makes sense if it's little fizz. That's most of the people there talking rubbish, yeah? They don't really think it through. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you have to think it through. What, you want some random guy to be around your kids, fam? A random dude, when it could be someone that you know, at least somebody that you used to be in school with, or you somebody that you used to work with. At least somebody that you know about his life that is not a fucking druggie or a crazy guy. You know what I'm saying? So for this next one, people, trust me, get a glass of water, get whatever that you need to be hydrated because the next one's just going to blow your mind. Just, just watch the clip that I'm just about to show you. Just watch the clip. Story about a transgender woman who started a Twitter storm after effectively forcing a beauty salon in Canada to close down for refusing to wax her bikini line. Jessica Yano, formerly Jonathan, filed 16 human rights complaints against different salon owners in Vancouver. It's after they all denied the service on the basis that Jessica still had male genitalia and they only catered for women, they said. Jessica's also found little sympathy on social media where she's faced a furious backlash on Twitter. There is no religion, beliefs, politics or culture when it comes to a woman's right to say no when asked to place her hands on a male-born genital area. It has nothing to do with genitalia and everything to do with force. It's also about those workers' right to not wax genitalia that needs different wax, handling and training. But reality needs to shush. Well, Jessica explained that, uh, as she saw it, the scandal wasn't about waxing, more about people using religion and culture to refuse a service, hinting that the salon owner was immigrant. The m majority, in fact, of the 16 complaints she made, uh, for some reason, were against immigrant shop owners. The story first emerged in 2018, but Yanov's identity was only recently disclosed. She's now also embroiled, too, in a paedophile scandal. Three teenage girls are accusing her of child exploitation for sexual misbehaviour online, including sending uh, asking them to send explicit pictures Brandon Stracker from the unsilent minority believes the LGBT community is being hijacked and tainted by this case I think it is of the utmost importance to protect minors to protect children in any scenario whether that's uh, with an adult predator who is 
transgender or not transgender. But I think the important thing to remember is that there are a lot of people in this world who are transgender or who identify as transgender who are completely normal people living normal lives who don't wish to be politicized, who don't wish to cause trouble, and who are of absolutely no harm to children or minors or anybody else. Okay, so welcome back, people. So I hope you just watched that clip that I just showed you of that news um, report that I just showed you where a transgender woman by the name of Jessica Yaniv, who is a transgender activist in Canada, she went to a beauty parlor where they wax um, women's pubic hair and stuff and asked them to wax her testicles. <laughs> she went to a beauty parlor to ask the ladies in the parlor to wax her testicles. Now how weird is that? Now how wrong is that? And when those ladies refused to do that, Jessica now took it upon herself to go and make a re police report and try to sue the beauty parlor and close down their business because they refused to wax her genitals. Now, is that fair? What type of a life are we living? In 2019, like, what type of a, of a life are we really living? Where now you don't even have a human right anymore, where you're forced to shave somebody's genitals. You're forced. This is a place where they probably shave just women's um, I mean, wax just women's um, pubic hair and stuff. But now you, okay, cool, you're a transgender woman. Yeah, okay, to society, you're a woman. But how can you go there if you haven't fully transitioned? If you fully transitioned and you have a vagina and you went there to do it and they refused you, I get it. Cool. But even then, they still have a right to refuse because it's up to them who they want to work on, who they don't want to work on. It's really and truly it's up to them. But the fact that you still have testicles and you went there and they refused to do it and then you tried to sue them and make a big deal out of it. That's just weird. You know what I'm saying? That's just all weird. Like, why does it have to be like this? Like, don't get twisted. Like, I have no problem with transsexual people. Like, shout out every transsexual out there. You're doing your thing. Well done. You're transitioning. Yeah, cool. But you can't be doing this type of stuff, like, where you're kind of, like, taking away people's human rights and stuff like that. And that's not all of them, by, by the way. It's just some of them, like, where you're imposing yourself onto people. You're not telling men... Um, that you're not a, a woman and stuff like that that you're saying that you're waiting for them to find out and things like that and that's just not right like even the same thing as that transsexual woman that went on ZZ Mill show that's saying that ah, I, I'm, I, I don't tell them I wait for them to find out like that's against someone's human rights you can't do stuff like that you can't do stuff like that it's just not right you know what I'm saying so you're just gonna fix this up man Jessica you can't do that you can't take somebody to the police station and get them sued and stuff and get their business closed down just because you want everything to happen your way like it's against their human rights if they don't want to shave your testicles they don't want to do it like you can't do that the same way in the news i'm reading or i've seen that a man apparently um who's a transsexual sorry a transsexual woman went to use their female bathroom and somehow raped a little kid now that is nuts like that is just crazy now you can't do stuff like that and do you know what kills me about the whole bloody matter is that even though he's a trans, she's transsexual, <laughs> she's still attracted to women, so she calls herself a proud lesbian or something, a trans lesbian or something like that. Like, what the hell? Like, what? Like, so wait, so you're a transsexual, but you're still attracted to women, so now you are a trans lesbian. So like, oh my days, man. Like, I just don't understand anymore. Like, I'm just, I'm confused. Like, Jessica, we're confused. Like, what type, what is this? So, basically, you're, you're a woman that, wait, you're a man who changed herself to a woman, not because you want to be with a man, but because you want, still want to be with women, but you just want to be a woman. Like, what sense does that make? <laughs> what sense? So, wait, so, I, so I, are you planning to fully transition? Are you planning to... Um, change like I don't get it you know what I'm trying to say like come on man like this is just I don't know man I just don't understand this man I really just don't understand this I really just understand this man but this is it anyway guys until next week next week we'll have some more videos um, talking about things that's happened and yeah man just hope you enjoyed this video if you've enjoyed this video please like subscribe and then share till next time